Morning, Nick Aiton. And uh, yeah, what a difference a day makes actually. This weekend's been, uh, yeah, a bit, bit, uh, bit wet and miserable in a sense, but uh, it's uh, clear blue skies, flat seas, crisp horizon. It's all, uh, it's all good. And um, I wanted to touch on the other things that I work on, which is the. Uh, the TV series I've been doing for for several years now, and um, I think I uh, mentioned before that uh, I sort of stumbled into it. I, I I wanted a I wanted a quite a different model for getting content and film and TV away. And uh, over the years, there's been lots of. Um, blockchain businesses lots of platforms that have tried actually and uh some have uh you know made a big dent some survived just about others just fell by the wayside and of course it's a tough industry to crack the uh entertainment film the you know the deemed hollywood model <coughs> excuse me <coughs> remnants of covid still and um it's, uh, if you think about it, like most uh, industries, there's layers and layers and layers, isn't there? And television and film is, is, is no different. You know, you have, the, you have the writers and creators, you have the studios, you have the studios that, you know, make the content, do a deal with the writers and creators, bring in loads of people. And then you have, you know, sales and distribution and uh and then then you have the the fan the viewer the consumer invariably the the model has been changed a little bit because you have the rise of you know hulu's netflix apple tv amazon all of those platforms that also create their own original content and but the flaws in the model just remain don't they the 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 recent um writer's strike uh and i understand why the unions are there because the studios are very powerful and there's for a long time been criticism of the opaque accounting you know how can how can certain films take billions at the box office but they they run a net loss well creative accounting and all of that and i guess behind that is raising capital to to make content is it's quite a risky business and that's why i think you know the industry model is is that they back you know familiar writers directors people with the track record and what hollywood are very guilty of right now is regurgitating the the prequel the sequel and uh in a sense they're not taking risks and they're just milking the the audience the crowd for whatever they can get i mean you know, Fast and Furious 10, isn't it? I mean, it's a nonsense. Um, anyway, look, um, so the model is, 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 is always been challenging. And uh, there we go, look. That's where I am this morning. Fab. The model has always been challenging uh, because the, the creators, the writers, and I include myself in that, often get squeezed. You know, you, you either get your your content ripped off or they give you a small check and tell you to bugger off and they take it over um is maybe it's plagiarized <coughs> but invariably you don't get i mean just look what happens in in music in in with spotify and these other platforms the you know the artists have taken years months you know to to create the content and you know, yes, Spotify gives you distribution, but you get such small percentages that you have to get so many eyeballs on it to make money. And and that's the problem I have with platforms generally, is that they disintermediate the creative talent from the from the audience. So clearly the best way of doing everything is to to go to the audience go to the audience direct, is it not? The direct to fan model. And that's what all of these uh, decentralized models and all these companies trying to disrupt this sector tried to do to go to go direct to collapse the 
the multiple layers in the industry where everyone's taking a fee, a percentage, and it it does drive me nuts, really, because, you know, you do have... Everyone has an agent, um, and you can't get hold of them. Um, you can't speak to anyone in this industry anymore, and if you don't have a track record, good luck. Um, and actually, I also think, and that's from the creative point of view, and you have no way of knowing how many eyeballs are on your content on the platform because they don't release the data. And therefore, you're totally trusting what, you know, is the check you get each month right? Um, the other challenge is, is the tracking and trace of the intellectual property, the digital rights management. And, it's, and it is very complicated, but the technology has miserably failed to to stop the you know, the illegal copying, the, the access to content that people haven't paid for, or they don't have rights. And there's a big confusion, and there's a big confusion in the, in the technology industry anyway, between, you know, access and, and rights. You know, access is, is, can be granted, but it doesn't mean you have the right to access it, or you've paid for it, or you have the right from the owner. And a lot of rights and access gets confused and mixed up. And the technology of the the studios and the platforms is not so good, actually. So therefore, the track and trace of these sort of intellectual property assets becomes becomes quite tricky. So look, I mean, the obvious way is to go direct to fan. And on the next conversation, we'll dig into that, shall we? Talk soon.